Starbucks Corporation, an American company, was founded in 1971. The name was inspired by Moby Dick's first mate, while the mermaid logo was inspired by the love of the sea from Starbucks' original location in Seattle, Washington. Starting as a single shop specializing in high-quality coffee and brewing products, the company grew to be the largest roaster in Washington with multiple locations in the early 80s. In 1981, the current CEO Howard Schultz realized that there was a good opportunity to work with the founder Jerry. Till this day, Starbucks has become the leading company in producing premium coffee in the world. Starbucks Corporations is a company that produces high-quality coffee. They offer service and products. They offer services such as a comfortable space for a hangout, Wi-Fi, and they serve customers very well. They also offer their product as customers can buy their coffee beans and make it on their own at home. Additionally, as their mission is to give and nurture human spirit, they always try their best to give a positive impact to the society by creating job opportunities, strengthening the community and committed to a green environment. A lot of job opportunities are offered to the society. In order to strengthen the community, they do charity events and programs with the people who are in need. For the green environment, Starbucks uses the cups that can be recycled for their customers to reduce the waste associated with their cups and other packaging. Now, before moving to this video, I would like to make a small request to you, if you like this content, please like this video and share your views in the comment, it would indicate to me that I should continue to make more such kind of videos, and at the same time your feedback will help me to improve the quality of the content. Also don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, in order to get unlimited free access to my case study videos archive. Moreover, I have given some case study links and study materials in the description of this video. With that being said, let me take you into the detailed view of this case study. Generally, Starbucks has implemented some operation strategy in order to improve their competitiveness in the industry. Starbucks has their own way to expand their business globally. Before they enter their business in a certain country, they will do some market research to enable a deeper understanding of the country's market. They will also study and do some research on the property right laws, as it also helps to make a successful market entry in emerging markets. For example, after they did some research in China, they found that the people there tend to love drinking tea compared to coffee. So to attract the customer, they introduced beverages that included local tea-based ingredients. Instead of focusing on expanding the size of the store, Starbucks also changed its store mix. The coffee giant is concentrating on drive throughs in the urban and suburban area. This is because people who live in urban areas tend to have busy lives and sometimes they don't want to waste their time by queuing up just to buy a cup of coffee. A drive through also opens up the potential market to include driving commuters. So they can just go to the drive through section and buy the coffee without having to leave the car. In this technology era, the company has adapted mobile applications for the promotion of its brand and sales of products earlier than the competition. They introduced Starbucks applications back in 2009 that are available at Apple App Store and Google Play Store. At first, the application only allowed the user to study about the coffee, locating the nearest store and creating their own drinks. But now, it's already evolved as it allows customers to pay for the drinks through application. With this way the company is able to reduce the processing fee for the transaction through its mobile app. Starbucks apps is a success due to its ability to combine payment and its loyalty program. Moreover, to show the success of mobile apps, Starbucks remains the most popular mobile payment app compared to Apple Pay, Google Pay and Samsung Pay. Starbucks is very well known to the market because of its high-quality product. The products that are offered by Starbucks are high-quality brewed coffee, Italian-styles espresso, cold-blended, roasted whole bean coffee, tea product, sodas and fruit juice. 
Moreover, Starbucks also offered some food such as cakes, sandwiches, salads, ice cream and pastries. Not only that, Starbucks also has their own merchandise such as mugs, travel tumblers, coffee grinders, coffee makers and storage containers. Other organizations such as manufacturers also take part in designing their product. Starbucks realized that working and collaborating with other companies will give them a win-win situation because it will attract more customers and profits to the both companies. So, Starbucks has collaborated with the Bandeau company. It is a company that designs everything from jewelry to 3D iPhone cases. Bandeau company will design Starbucks merchandise such as mugs, cold cups, canvas totes and notebooks. The merchandise then will be sold at Starbucks stores. The uniqueness and the beauty of the merchandise design by Bandeau company attract more customers to come and grab it as it is a limited edition product. There are four phases of workflow in the process design such as request, negotiation, performance and acceptance. It is a process for a customer to buy the product. In the request phase, it's a phase where the customer lines in, makes a choice and orders the coffee. Next in the negotiation phase, it's a phase where the barista recommended the other things that want to be added to the coffee or the new menu and promotions that are available to the customer. After the customer already decided their choices it will come to the next phase that is performance. It is a phase where the barista makes the coffee. During this process, customers can see the way their drinks are made and have a conversation with the barista about the coffee. Lastly is the acceptance phase. It's the phase where the customer tastes the drinks and gives feedback to the barista whether the coffee met their taste or not. Otherwise, if the drinks are not met with the customer's taste, the customer can request the barista to remake the coffee until it meets up with their taste. Starbucks uses the standard product layout approach where the customer needs to queue in line to order the coffee, providing a waiting line for the customer to queue while buying the coffee. There is also a food section where the customer can see the types of cakes and pastries available. Lastly, the seating sections. Starbucks provided a comfortable sofa, chair and couch for the customer. The view and design for the shop are very beautiful and calm which will make the customer feel at home. Moreover, they will also put on songs to entertain the customer. Starbucks takes a holistic approach to ethically source coffee through responsible purchasing practices, farmer loans and forest conservation programs. Starbucks also claimed that by using this way, it can help to cultivate a bright future for the farmers, a more stable climate for the planet and create a long-term supply of high-quality beans that have been carefully blended, roasted and packed fresh. The company carefully chooses coffee beans that meet with Starbucks quality from selected farmers only. They will buy coffee from certified farmers under the Starbucks Coffee and Farmer Equity Program. With this decision, Starbucks can ensure that they give high-quality products that align with the firm's premium brand image. In terms of services, Starbucks also uses several adequate services to smooth out their service. The company uses random check-in from district managers where they will check the barista, talk to the customer to ask feedback and check the drinks to ensure quality. Not only that, every six months the stores will be checked in all aspects to ensure the quality standards are maintained. Starbucks also encourages the customer to give feedback toward their service and product. Starbucks used Facebook pages, Instagram and Twitter to announce any change, promotion and feedback from customers which was public where customers could easily respond. Starbucks will answer all the comments and complaints individually to the person's account and they will not copy and paste the same replies. With this way, Starbucks will always know about the customer's complaint and will fix it in the future. In terms of cleanliness, Starbucks is really taking care of it as it is one of the priorities. Bathrooms are cleaned often and they allow anyone to use it even if they are not a customer. 
The condiment station also is checked every 10 minutes. For the pastries, they must be delivered daily and must be placed on the shelves before the store is open. Any pastries that are defective will be returned for a refund to ensure the quality and the image of the company. There are various costs that Starbucks faces within the company, fixed costs, direct and indirect costs, and operating costs. Fixed costs are costs that remain constant as output changes, such as retail space and payments for fire insurance. Direct costs include expenses such as wages expense, equipment expense, and supplies expense. Advertising and payroll are classified as indirect costs. Advertising from Starbucks varied between the years 2015 to 2017. According to Starbucks Fiscal 2017 Annual Report, advertising expenses totaled $282.6 million. Over the years 2013 through 2017, the costs of goods sold kept increasing at a quick pace. The cost of goods sold had several factors that impacted the rising expense. Starbucks opened a total of 7,572 stores worldwide between the years of 2013 to 2017. This resulted in the need for more raw materials, especially coffee beans. Since coffee has become a high-in-demand material, the supply for premium coffee beans is limited, therefore, the need to increase the price of coffee beans has spiked. Coffee is becoming more expensive by the pound, leading to Starbucks having to raise its prices on its products. In 2013 Starbucks had an operating loss of $325.4 million. This was because of the termination of an agreement between Kraft Foods and Starbucks that limited Starbucks to sell a kind of coffee pods that worked only in Kraft's Tassimo machines, which resulted in Starbucks paying $2.75 billion to Kraft Foods. However, within the next couple of years, Starbucks' operating income continued to increase. Despite the prices for coffee beans rising, Starbucks was able to continue to raise its profits through cost dividends, shares and investments, including the raise of its products. Starbucks have a centralized system which will enable them to coordinate their logistics operations across six continents. Currently, they have six central distribution center where the coffee is roasted, prepared and packaged after that, these will be transported to their large, regional or small warehouse where they get delivered to the final retail stores. The process of manufacturing also follows a strict procedure to ensure the high-quality coffee when it comes to their customer. Starbucks used an automated information system that combined with a centralized logistic planning network. This system allows them to monitor the real time of their inventory levels, storage capacity, trucking schedules, safety in operations, total end-to-end -end supply chain cost and enterprise savings. With this kind of tracking, the company can plan their next step with an efficient that matches consumer demand. The team reorganized into four basic functional groups such as plan, source, make and deliver, were tasked to find improvement. The sourcing group works on finding the factors that cause the price to increase. Through research, they can negotiate a better contract. The manufacturing group has come out that they should open the fifth U.S. roasting plant so they can reduce cost as well as time delivery. Next they also will introduce weekly scorecards with very clear service, cost, and productivity metrics. This approach allows an extension supply chain to have the same reference framework, with a goal aligned with the success of the entire company. Thank you so much for listening to this video, I hope this video might be informative for you. If you find this video useful, I would request you to like this video, and please do share your feedback regarding this video in the comment. It would mean a lot to me. Last but not the least, as mentioned earlier do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos. You can also write in the comment, if you would like me to make videos regarding any specific case studies that you have in your mind.
Meanwhile, you can also have a check on my 5 minutes learning YouTube channel for getting access to hundreds of case study videos. Thanks a lot again, see you soon with another interesting case study video.